In the heart of Austria, one can find the Ausseerland. Surrounded by mountains, the lake of Alt Aussee, once upon a time the holiday paradise of the young boy Walter Monk. Water also shaped his later life, the oceans. And we have a, a good way of describing that by a slogan, let the moon uh, flush the lagoon. It rhymes and it rhymes even in Italian. In the USA, Walter Monk becomes a world known and respected, recognized and multiple times awarded oceanographer at the Scripps Institute in California. Receives, among others, the Japanese Kyoto Prize and the Swedish Crawford Prize, which corresponds to the Nobel Prize. Einstein of the oceans, he was named by the New York Times. Is an important component of the atmosphere ocean heat machine. In 2018, in remembrance of his childhood paradise, but also in appreciation of its inhabitants, Monk initiated a project regarding the Lake of Altaussee, cooperating with the University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences, Vienna. The geology and biology of the lake should be intensively researched and the findings made available to the population, especially to young people. The project is led by Erwin Heine. It was in autumn 2018 when I got a phone call at my office at the university in Vienna. It was Walter asking me if I would be interested to carry out a project at Lake Altosee. And I immediately agreed. To participate in a project with Walter Monk is one of the greatest honor for a scientist. So we started immediately with the design and the preparations of the project. The goal of the project is the creation of a multidimensional digital representation of the lake. It is based on contributions from many water-related sciences, mostly all, to provide further information about the history of the lake basin. During the first expedition in 2019, we started with the creation of a 3D bathymetric model of the lake basin and a first exploration about the occurrence of microplastic in this crystal clear alpine lake. Students from a nearby high school are also involved in the project. Hello, my name is Manuel. This is Matthias and Erich. And today we're here to take um, microfiber samples for the long-term study of microfibers in cooperation with the Molten Monk Foundation for the oceans. And we're just preparing for the first sample today. Um, Eric collected water, so we're ready to go. And so we are here at this point to, to perform, also to, to collect the first few samples. Later on, we will go to other parts of the lake to have, um, to, so that we compare different parts of the lake with each other. And so now Matthias is preparing for the next sample and Eric is just filtering. Our old friend is also here and we're ready to go to have a day full of scientific work. And we're very, very happy to be here. It's beautiful weather, beautiful location. And we wish you all the best in America and greetings from Aldose. So I met Walter Mernk at Scripps Institution of Oceanography, which is where he has worked for seven plus years, 70. From years. Dimitri Dehane, a scientist at the Scripps Institute, so, uh, the three I learn more about Walter Monk and his long life and, uh, as a researcher. In Italy, and uh, I know that Walter Monk had worked in Venice. And so uh, naturally we met and uh, we, we kind of bonded very well together because he's a very interesting person. And uh, if you have to address a question that involves very you know, challenging research and uh, educating uh, young students to do something, Walter Menk was the person to go to. When I arrived at Scripps, I was nobody. I was just a first year graduate student and he was the best oceanographer in the world. 
and he would ask me questions about my research and he would ask follow-up questions and he would challenge my, my ideas and he made me feel like I was part of this long blue line of oceanographers who came before me. He made me feel like I was part of something bigger than myself and he inspired me to be a better scientist. The lake of Alta Ose has drinking water quality and is fed by springs of the surrounding limestone mountains. They contain large quantities of purest water. Ich uh, wurde geholt, damit ich die Karstquellen hier in der Region anschaue. I was asked to participate and analyze the caustic springs in this area, whether these are permanent or temporary springs, and to investigate how the lake level responds to their lactuation in discharge. Andreas Holzinger, botanist and cell biologist at the University of Innsbruck, researches the green algae related to land plants at the lakeside. Under the microscope, he classifies individual algae strands, studies their reproduction and the products of reproduction, the so-called zygospores. They are found only in the best water quality, just like at the lake of Alt Aussee. Zygospores are also found in lake sediments. Holtinger's colleague, the paleontologist Jean Niklaus Haas, will then examine the sediments for pollen and zygospores. In contrast to pollen, zygospores indicate that the lake existed in this region thousands of years ago. From a platform, scientists take and analyze samples of the sediments of the seabed from different meters of sea depth. We are geologists from the University of Innsbruck and we are studying the, the sediments which are actually on the bottom of the lake. So every year it accumulates mud and mud on the lake. And by taking such uh, beautiful sediment samples uh, out of the bottom, we can actually reconstruct what has been happening here in the lake and around the lake over the last 10,000 years at least. So we try to find out how often uh, climate changes happen, uh, it's different natural hazards take place such as snow avalanches, earthquakes, uh, rock slides, all these different things impact this beautiful environment and that's why we try to reconstruct when these things happened, how often they happened and how strong they were. And uh, for doing so, we, we first did some uh, acoustic profiles to see how the underground looks like. And then we select the exact location where we can reconstruct the whole history of the lake. And that's where we are right now. So we have already six meters deep in the sediment by, by this whole system. We, we core into the sediments. And with this, we hope to cover actually the whole history of the lake, how it is formed and what its future might be actually. Above the village of Altausee lies the 1,717 meter high Sandling. For almost a thousand years, miners have been digging for salt here. The salt and the constant room temperature preserve not only ancient works of art from a mining chapel, but also fresh fur spruce for years. The Altausea salt mine became world famous after the end of the Second World War, when US soldiers known as Monument Men harvested immeasurable art treasures from all over Europe, such as the world famous Ghent altar of the Van Eyck brothers, plundered by the Nazi regime. Shortly before the end of the war, the mine's tunnels were to be blown up. At the last moment, it was possible to prevent this. Today, the kilometer-long tunnels serve not only salt extraction, but also science. Countless sample drill holes from past years have been stored there. They are now being analyzed by Austrian scientists in collaboration with the Walter Monk Foundation. <laughs> Next month you have to stay here. Yeah. Wow. This is the drilling. It was called Reitern, Reitern uh, at the border of Alt Aussee. And uh, we are here in the core 164 to 165 meter. And um, 
I, I would take probably this as uh, such a small piece here with me uh, because uh, we're checking at the moment the, the, uh, the properties of that material. And there are, there are two methods which are especially interesting for us. One is optical stimulated luminescence. That means uh, it's a bit something like what would you do, what you uh, working with as well. That means um, inside of the um, the minerals, especially quartz, but as well feldspar and so on, uh, you 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 accumulate radiation damages during the time. company Because Salinen Austria AG uh, drilled through one of the smallest and deepest glacial basins in the world and took and, uh, 880 meter uh, of core material. Based on geophysics, this glacial basin, situated in the middle of the Austrian Alps, reached a level comparable to the present-day Dead Sea, which is about 400 meter below sea level. The modern lakes in Jauseerland, Grundlsee, Altaussee, Udensee, were created during the last glaciation about 15 to 20,000 years ago. But this deep glacial basin and lake was very much older and existed several hundred thousand years ago. The aim of our research is to evaluate the long-term stability of human alpine habitats. If glaciers can excavate such extraordinary deep holes in the middle of mountains, we must consider the possibility of severe alpine landscape and habitat changes during climate change in the 21st century. Not really subglacial, but... Walter Monk had the traditional miner's greeting Glück auf stamped on his medal to commemorate his 100th birthday. In 2018, he returned to Altaussee for the last time. In his parents' villa, the 101-year-old told from his long and rich life, for the production of a biographical documentary. General Rommel had gone home, had a better prediction from the Axis meteorologists that it would be impossible to land. 2021, Mary Monk talking to the current owner of the villa. Mary has been president of the foundation named after her husband since he passed away and also accompanies the annual scientific examinations at the Lake of Altaussee. Make sure he keeps in contact. This year we are focusing our research activities here on the lake on two very interesting items. These are submerged trees and underwater spring pits. This lake receives the most water income from these underwater spring pits. These underwater springs are delivering mainly 80 to 100 percent of the water in some times to this lake. The biggest one is situated in the northwestern shoreline of the lake and was discovered in 2010 by Wolfgang Gasperl who is head of the water service from the local fire brigade and he is also piloting us today to this lake area. Here on the chart plotter, you can see the high resolution bathymetry of the lake bottom, which we produced 2019 in our first campaign. It shows different sediments, large rocks, cracks, but also several other submarine spring pits. To investigate the geohydrology of these underwater springs, we are using a remote operating underwater vehicle that you can see here, it's called a ROV. This ROV is a very compact system with six powerful thrusters and is able to dive even in strong currents. It is equipped with a high resolution zoom camera to document type and distribution of sediments in the pit. The 
this potter end is free of sediments, but it's blocked with big stones. At the western section of this pit, a submerged bundle of wastewater pipes and power lines crosses the spring pit. North of this huge pit, there are several smaller craters of other submarine springs. The rough video sequences show accumulations of sediments indicating strong currents also for these craters. All this information together with the echo sounding, the sediment geologist data are able to take further specific measurements regarding the lake water income and the water balance itself. Sailing back from the underwater spring area, we are approaching the area of the submerged trees. These trees, they are standing upright, some of them inclined at the lake bottom, and the stumps of these trees are anchored to the ground by its roots. Radiocarbon dating delivered a calendar age of these trees, or of some of them, of 770 plus minus 40. So these trees has an age of about 1,350 years. More than 100 of these trees were recognized during our bathymetric survey with the echo sounder system. One of these tree strums with a diameter of more than one meter has been taken out by the local fire brigade. We counted 200. 46 year rings, so recognizing the age of the radio and carbon dating, so these trees maybe have lived in a time span from 500 to 750. The remotely under uh, water operating vehicle help us now to classify these trees on the lake bottom to get more information about the history and the age of the lake bottom and the lake area. The results of this comprehensive project should lead to a better understanding of Lake alt its geological and ecological significance, its history, and subsequently to an awareness about microfiber pollution and its influence for this alpine region.